Hello everyone. Today will be a slightly different video because I think I'm actually going to say nice things. At least way more nice things than I normally do. But it'll still be entertaining, I promise. The fat activist we're covering today is very interesting. She is somehow the most ill-informed fat activist when it comes to factual information I've ever seen, while also being by far the least harmful. And you'll see why as we go. What's up, babes? Welcome back to the plus sides of being plus size. Some people believe this has to do with the roundness of our face, and that might be it. But fat people are looked at as inherently more trustworthy. We oftentimes have a lot better balance than our thin counterparts because we have a lot more weight holding us to the ground and keeping us stable. So biking, boating, helping people lift things is a lot easier for us. Because of our better vitamin absorption, as well as our really strong cell structures because of the extra fat in our body, we often don't have nearly as many problems with our hair, skin, and nails. I haven't talked about this one nearly as much because there's still a lot of research going into it, but we should talk about the obesity paradox. Obesity paradox has come around because there have been multiple studies and more studies are happening that are showing that chronically obese or overweight people have a higher chance of surviving things like heart disease and diabetes than their thinner counterparts. Do you see it now? This lady says the most wild stuff about obesity, but it's so ridiculous that I would hardly call it misinformation. Except the obesity paradox bit but more trustworthy with better balance? What? This balance thing put me off so much that I actually went to see if there was any evidence for this claim, and I found more than four studies that say obesity has a negative impact on balance. And it's an even bigger problem for elderly people who tend to have more physical ailments to begin with and are at bigger risk of falling than younger people. So I thought that was interesting. She also said that fat people have better hair, skin, and nails. From what I found, skin problems are very common with obesity because most organs are affected by it, but there's also a recent article that suggests obesity leads to hair loss in the long term. And aside from those studies, everyone knows that proper nutrition is how to maintain a healthy body, including hair, skin, and nails, but obesity is actually a form of malnutrition. People usually just think of starvation, but overeating is also a form of malnutrition, so it makes sense that it would cause health problems. And she mentioned the obesity paradox. There's a reason it's called a paradox, because it contradicts all other knowledge about the subject. There also used to be studies that showed smoking could be healthy in some instances, and that was also considered a paradox because we know smoking is unhealthy. And even if there are some physical advantages to being obese, which there's still no comprehensive evidence for, it still doesn't negate the countless other ways that being obese causes problems. Like for example, balance problems the joint problems, the increased risk of diabetes, even if you might be able to handle it better. None of it seems worth it to me. She also said that fat people have better cell structure? Girl, what? That's not how biology works. Good morning, babes. Welcome to our new favorite segment, the plus sides of being plus size. Probably the most vital plus side of being plus size is that animals, children, people find me so warm and comfortable, they want to hold me at any time. Plus side number two, and vitally important for group friends, I am the best at saving seats. I can save up to two seats with just my cheeks, and if I man split while I'm sitting, I can save up to four seats on my own. Plus side number three, I'm always a great person to sleep over with. Because as somebody who's usually the biggest in the group, you you crash on my couch, I always have a t-shirt that fits you. So she has this whole series where she goes through the plus sides of being plus size, and for the most part it's cute and fine. But she has a bunch of these videos, and they're all full of the most superficial reasonings, like you always have clothes for your friends. That's an entertaining thing to bring up if you want to give a tongue-in-cheek answer if someone asks why do you like being fat, but are those legitimate reasons to ever want to be fat or to become fat? You get to have more pets in your lap? You get to save seats for friends at events? But then a lot of these things can also be interpreted as bad things because if you can save seats for friends at events, that probably means you spill into other people's seats at those same events. And then you get into the whole plain seats are oppressive conversation. But I don't think it's a bad thing that this woman talks about these things because I haven't seen her go on and on about how plain seats are oppressive. But others in the fat acceptance community will make quippy responses like this as to why being fat is fun, but then they'll also complain that university desks don't fit them. This lady has the right idea when it comes to actually being positive about being fat. 
Welcome back to everybody's favorite segment, the plus sides of being plus side. So simply by existing as I do, there will always be some kind of man who does not want to have sex with me, and that's great by me. And as much as this is kind of just taking a negative and spinning it into a positive, because I constantly bust out of the front thighs with my pants, I constantly get to buy new pants! Which can be costly, I understand, but... I always get to just kind of vary my style and pick something new that I like. I think it's funny how in the last one she admits that she's trying to turn a negative into a positive by saying that constantly buying pants is a good thing, when this entire plus sides of being plus size series is all just turning a negative into a positive. <laughs> And the first point when she said that it's great that there's men who don't want to sleep with her, she's the only fat activist who has said something like that that I actually believe when she says it. So many fat activists are like, I love myself and I don't care if anyone finds me attractive. But in the next breath, they'll tell people to humble themselves so they can get a date or mention how dating preferences are oppressive. I actually believe that if a dude came up to this woman in a club and said, I don't find you attractive, she would brush it off and not spend the rest of the night crying in the bathroom because of it, unlike every other fat activist I've ever featured on this channel. It's a nice change of pace. Another episode of the plus sides of being plus size. You got it, babe. Now your fat cells is where your energy is stored in the body. So more fat cells often more energy. There are also multiple studies showing that fat men rank higher for sexual satisfaction and sexual stamina than their thin counterparts. Thank you first and foremost to everybody who reminded me of this in my comments, but obesity is considered a comorbidity and therefore we qualified for vaccines. I try not to use this one often because I do feel bad, but as a true crime junkie, I am harder to kidnap. She just framed having more fat and therefore more energy as a good thing. Storing months worth of excess energy on your body is not a good thing. That's why we don't overfill our gas tanks. There's a healthy amount of fat to have on your body, and there's an unhealthy amount. And the reference to overweight men having better sex lives also left me floored, so I had to look it up. The study I think she's referring to is an old study that found that overweight men last longer in bed due to an increase in female hormones. If you were bragging about a benefit of being fat that includes having hormonal issues, you're really reaching. Also, it didn't say that fatter men have better sex lives, it just says they last longer in bed. But it should also be noted that a higher BMI in men is shown to increase a risk for erectile dysfunction as well. So there's that. And this study was only done on 100 men, and I think it was over 10 years ago. So it's quite a stretch to be citing this article at all. And she also says that fat people get access to vaccines early, which also seems like a sad thing to bring up because it means you're unhealthy. It's like bragging about lasting longer in bed due to a preventable hormone imbalance. Not really things to brag about. But this woman cherry picks the most obscure studies to make the most unnecessary points, and it's hilarious. She also said that she's harder to kidnap. I'm going to have to disagree. I would say it's just as easy because while fatter people may be harder to lift or drag compared to skinnier people, they'll also have a harder time running away and won't have as much endurance to put up a long fight with a potential kidnapper. So I say this isn't true. Yet again, for the plus sides of being plus sides. Despite the fact that people weirdly think that we never exercise, we actually exercise all the time because we carry extra weight on our body, so our muscle mass is nice. She just cited the fact that she's constantly carrying around excess body weight as a reason why she exercises all day, every day. Is that not alarming? I mentioned frequently that being fat leads to excess joint pain and lower mobility, but carrying that excess weight around all the time is why obese people develop joint pain. You are putting in heavy exercise in order to carry your own body weight. That's not a good thing. We have excellent vitamin absorption. No. <laughs> Not true. Many cultures, including our own, which you can see through like sports, we equate size to strength. So a lot of powerful rulers were chosen because they appeared more powerful because they were bigger. Rulers were chosen because they looked larger and were bigger. There's so many ways I can interpret this statement, and I don't even know where to begin. I think there's two ways she could have come up with this idea. One, she noticed how a lot of rulers used to be much larger than the average person, and came to the conclusion that they were chosen to rule because they were large. But in reality, they were probably large because they were rulers, and they had more wealth to consume more than the average person. 
or two, she noticed how some rulers, like warlords, may have been larger than average based on musculature and stature, which may have been true, but they were also rarely fat, more just muscly. So, yeah, I'm still very confused. <laughs> Having a good amount of fat, especially in your mid-belly section, is a good way to fend off some of the issues that come with menopause. This woman seems to play medical mad libs when it comes to coming up with the reasons why being fat is good. She's like, being fat reduces the risk of athlete's foot because we have double chins and chub rub scars. You can't argue with facts. I want to say first and foremost that there's absolutely nothing wrong with wrinkles and you should not be ashamed to have them. But being fat does mean that you are less likely to have more wrinkles. This isn't true. I've seen fat people that are aging like after Halloween pumpkins and I've seen skinny people with the same problem. Are you ready for another plus size of being plus size? Because I am. I talked a little bit about how fat bodies help us heal and how some things we are less likely to die from if we have said disease. But I don't think I've mentioned that that grab bag of diseases includes things like Alzheimer's and even Parkinson's. She said that obesity is linked to less instances of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. But I looked it up and it seems like the jury is really out on that. There are a few studies that say that obesity leads to a lower risk of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. There's some say that if you are overweight but not obese, you have a higher risk of Parkinson's. Some say that obesity and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's are completely unrelated. Some say that they are related. So I wouldn't confidently say that obesity is or is not a risk factor for Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. If you look at that, it's time for another the plus sides of being plus size. Having a higher body weight is shown to reduce the chances of osteoporosis. And for women on birth control, that's huge! I found absolutely nothing that says obesity reduces the risk of osteoporosis. But I did find a few studies that said that obesity may lead to osteoporosis or exacerbate it, so no surprises with that one. <laughs> I know this isn't going to apply to every fat person, but a big majority of us, people feel more comfortable eating in front of us because they know that we are less likely to shame them for it. And as somebody whose friends and family have eating disorders, that's hugely important for recovery. I want to say for this one, I have absolutely no factual evidence to back this up. This is only my personal opinion based on what Animal Planet has shown me. And that's that if I were out in the wild, it's more likely that if I were smaller, large predators such as tigers, crocodiles, lions, you name it, are to pick me out of a crowd. So, less likely to get eaten. Despite the fact that we all know that I probably taste way better. So people feel more comfortable eating in front of you. Sure, maybe. But I will also say this isn't universal. I've had fatter family members comment on my eating habits at the dinner table saying things like, Why do you eat so little? That's why you have such skinny legs. You eat like a bird. Stuff like that. And I can say it is less comfortable eating around those people than many of my skinnier family members. So this is not a universal point. And you are less likely to be eaten by wild animals in a crowd. Maybe. This point is similar to the kidnapping one, because on one hand, yes, you may be a larger target, so animals will ignore you. But on the other hand, you're a bigger catch, because you're bigger. So they may go after you because they see you as a bigger meal. Probably depends on the animal. And also how big the people in the crowd are, because if it was full of people that are the average size in the United States, <laughs> girl run, you do not have the size advantage. But this woman has all these videos as to why being fat is good, and all of these things are said pretty jokingly, but in all seriousness, are these reasons any justification for becoming or remaining fat when you compare it to the countless risks involved with being obese? Fat activists are always talking about how they are wholeheartedly in love with being fat and they would never want to be skinny, but if this is the best you can come up with as to why being fat is great, then I have a hard time believing that's true. Hello Chunkies, it's me, your fatty godmother, to remind you that people who've had weight loss surgery are not failures to the body positive or fat positive or body liberation or fat acceptance movement. The world failed them. Be fucking supportive. I think we may disagree on how the world may have failed someone who got weight loss surgery, but I absolutely agree that we shouldn't be shaming people or ostracizing people from body positivity for getting weight loss surgery. And props to her for being the only fat activist I've ever seen that isn't shitting on people trying to lose weight. 
And aside from her weird facts that seem to have been pulled out of absolutely nowhere, she seems like a very confident and cheerful person. Body positivity is supposed to be about loving yourself despite or even because of your flaws, but most fat activists claim that body positivity is only for fat people, and they spend most of their time tearing down and policing skinny women and gatekeeping body positivity instead of uplifting the fat women they claim to advocate for. But this woman doesn't do that. She doesn't spend her time focusing on skinny women's lives, and instead tries to help plus-size women improve their self-esteem. First and foremost, there's nothing wrong with your body. You're a beautiful person. There are multiple somebodies out there for you. There are multiple somebodies who are going to be there for different parts of your life. Love is such a beautiful idea, but I don't just want somebody who loves me. I want someone who respects me. I want somebody who makes me laugh. I want somebody who fuels my love for living. I want somebody who helps me grow. And you deserve that too. So this is my normal style of video, but for Valentine's Day, I thought what I could do to help my fatties out was to actually make videos to people who are dating, having sex with, in love with their partners are fat folk. Let's talk lingerie. So for fat folks who are self-conscious about their belly or their rolls, lean towards baby dolls. They're tight usually around the breasts and then they flow outward. It's really good for people who don't feel comfortable in their body. Now let's talk jewelry. So if you're looking to buy a ring for your partner this season, and maybe they see a ring that they like that doesn't come in their size, take it to a jeweler to get resized. You could also do this with a piece that maybe was passed down to them that wasn't originally intended for them to wear, but they feel very sentimental toward. Why aren't more fat activists doing stuff like this? Gestures that actually improve the lives of fat people. You know, helping people get past their insecurities instead of projecting their insecurities out into the world. She's out here telling people how they can help manage their partner's insecurities instead of getting mad that men don't find her attractive. This video telling this woman that she doesn't have to feel horrible about herself and that someone is out there for her is the type of work that people who are actually confident do. Most other fat activists would stitch a video like this and go on a long rant about how beauty standards and fat oppression are the reason dating sucks and fat women are beautiful creatures that the world doesn't appreciate and on and on and on. But this fat activist didn't make this woman's suffering a jumping off point for a long diatribe on fat oppression. She told her that there is hope and she is worthy of love and this low point isn't a rut that she should get stuck in. She spoke directly to her and gave reassurances. And this video really brought into perspective how similar I think the incel community and the fat acceptance community are. Because the same type of dating rhetoric is used to radicalize other people. When a young man gets rejected one too many times, he might run into the incel community which tells him that society hates men and that women are all whores and that he'll never be able to find love or happiness because society is set up in a way that there's no hope for him as a man of his height, race, ability, etc. And in fat acceptance, it's the same. A woman gets rejected one too many times and finds fat activists saying that society hates fat women and all the potential partners that dislike them are bigoted because fat phobia is bigotry and oppressive and you'll never find love because society is against you because of your size. Both of these coping mechanisms are attempts to blame society for why people don't like you instead of fully processing your feelings of rejection in a healthy way and maybe doing some introspection as to why people don't like you. You cannot convince me that this type of fat acceptance rhetoric and insult culture are not the same. They're just tailored slightly to appeal to different genders. And that's why this fat activist's approach to reassuring this woman that she can find love is very refreshing. I think at this point I spent so much time watching the most militant fat activists talk that I've gotten desensitized to how toxic their dating rhetoric is. And watching this video really put the whole thing in perspective. Like, I'm genuinely shocked to see a fat activist giving true kindness to another fat woman. This woman is giving this other woman reassurance without sending her down a path of existential crisis that convinces her that the world hates her. And that's what helping fat women should be. I really don't think the fat acceptance movement considers how harmful spreading these ideas that the world truly does hate fat women is for the psyche of the women that they're telling it to. I've said before that the fat acceptance movement is a thinly veiled way for fat women to hate on skinny women under the guise of social justice, which is why all fat activists reek of jealousy and spend so much of their time projecting their own body insecurities onto the rest of the world instead of working on themselves. 
This is the only person I've ever featured on my channel that I believe got into fat acceptance for reasons that weren't self-hate and jealousy. And I say that because she doesn't spend her energy picking apart song lyrics or going on rants about how skinny women don't belong in body positivity or talking about how weight loss is fat phobic. While she may have some very ill-informed information on obesity and health, she seems to focus her energy on uplifting fat women instead of bringing skinny women down. And she has more true confidence and self-esteem than every other fat activist I've ever featured on this channel combined. So that's it. I think I actually like this woman. She's new and refreshing, and it's nice to see a fat activist that isn't constantly petty and spiteful. And I don't know. Maybe this is a sign that my standards for what I consider good in fat activism has reached hell. Who knows?